uh, the goal of us being here is to do whatever means possible within the law to stop a baby from being murdered, sure. right? But ultimately, we're here with the gospel because okay. we understand that no person is going to have life, eternal life, apart from the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so if we, this person drives in, we can't communicate to that person, right? We, we try everything we possibly can to stop them with a sign, with a, with a holler, with a shout, uh, with a track. But when they go around the corner, my brother here, most of the time, will get up on that ladder and him too and plead with them and say, please, you, this is your last chance. This is, I mean, you're going, you're taking your kid into the slaughter. There's no way we can get to you once you go through those doors. And they're like, please, please don't do it. Don't do it. And they share the law of God because the law of God's written in our hearts. And the law of God uh, shows us what is wrong, right? Just the same way these, there's speed limit signs on these, on these roads. And as we go down the street, there's a, there's a 45 mile an hour probably speed limit sign. And that sign is to show us, that sign is to show us that we're, uh, there's a law of how fast to go. But have you ever looked down at your speedometer and you're going faster than 45 when it said 45? I have, I've been, I've went way too fast, right? And I didn't even realize I was going that fast until I saw the law, until I saw what the sign said. Well, that's what the law of God does, right? The Ten Commandments, obviously, or the moral law, right? Thou shalt not murder is, is one of them, right? Thou shalt not commit adultery, right? Uh, thou, shalt not, um, thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not steal. And all of these things, right, are, are, God says are written on our hearts. We know that they're wrong, yet we do them anyway because that's our sin nature, right? And we have this desire, even though we know it says not to do it, we go and do it anyway. It's kind of like wet paint on the wall, right? There's wet paint on that wall and there's a sign that says wet paint. Oh, I want to touch the wet paint, right? Or like cement, freshly uh, cement, cement the driveway. What do people love to do? Write their name in it, right? Now, if it's their driveway, they do whatever the heck they want with it, but you know, vandals, they'll come over and want to ride in it because, you know, it's wet cement. I can get my name written in that. And so, that's how the law of God shows us our sin, right? It, it reveals our sin to us, but it also re reveals the righteousness and holiness of who God is, right? His character. So it reveals to us our sin, but it reveals the, the glory and the splendor and the righteousness and the perfection of God. So today, when we stand here, we don't stand here as righteous people. We're not righteous in and of ourselves. Our righteousness is nothing but filthy rags, right? We have a righteousness of another, the Lord Jesus Christ. Right, uh, you know Jesus Christ is is the is God in flesh, right? Uh, he, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe there's one God, three persons, second person of the Trinity, and He was born through a virgin, right? And He lived a perfect, sinless life, fulfilled the law of God. That that sign that we broke, right? That law that we broke, He never broke it. You know this, right? And and by Him not breaking the law, why was He doing it for? He was doing it so that the righteousness that He would uh, fulfill would be I'm let this guy go. would be credited to us as a gift credited to us as a gift right to everyone who would believe in him by faith but also he didn't only credit us count us righteous by his life right he paid for our sins on the cross so when he went to the cross the perfect son of god fully man fully god he took the wrath of God for the sins that you deserve and I deserve and every all mankind deserves because we're all sinners and fall short of the glory of God. And so when that, uh, that wrath, that punishment uh, that fell upon Christ, right, he absorbed the wrath of God. And so now those who place their faith in Christ, there's no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So now, although I stand here today uh, in my flesh, right, uh, I'm not perfect right? Uh, I sin. I, I look at something with a lustful intent. I was looking at one of those cool little three-wheel motorcycle things over there, and I looked at Zach, and I said, is that coveting that I want that motorcycle? And then he was like, oh, I don't know. It depends. <laughs> and, and, and so we, we know that we have these sinful uh, desires, but to be born again is to for God to miraculously work in your life, to cause you to have this new birth, to have this new life, uh, to love God now, to love his, uh, to love his law, uh, to love Jesus Christ and his word, and to turn from sin, to actually have a desire to, to, to walk towards God and actually serve him and love him. And it's an actual desire that we have. It's not something that we're doing to earn favor with God, but because we have favor with God through faith in his son, right? We're able to walk in newness of life. 
And so now we're turning from our sins and we're walking towards Christ. And that's that, that's repentance, right? Repentance and faith are conjoined twins. If I'm walking towards Christ, I'm repenting, right? right. And it's, and it's through faith. And, and I don't, uh, I don't know how far you are along in, in the Catholic faith, but in uh, the Protestant faith, it is by faith alone and Christ alone to the glory of God alone that we believe that we are justified before God. Right. So justified meaning declared righteous. Right. So when I die, like if I'm right now, it's getting hot and I stroke out and have a heart attack and I die. Will I be able to stand before God? Well, not by right, not by myself. I need, I need a representative. I need an advocate. And that advocate is Jesus Christ the righteous. And I am trusting fully in the work and the person of Jesus Christ alone for my salvation. And in that faith, right, that I have, uh, I believe the Bible says that it's granted to us, right? It was granted to us to believe in him, but it's also granted for us to suffer for, for his namesake. And so this suffering, turning from sin, facing persecution, all the suffering that belongs to a person who is a, a new creation in Christ, someone who is no longer uh, walking, uh, walking in the path of sin, no longer uh, walk, following Satan the world, right? Uh, now following Christ and his word and, and repentance and faith, Right, that person's a new creature, born again. Right, Second uh, Corinthians five seventeen. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. The old has passed away, and all things have become new. And so now we're following uh, what he's commanded us commanded us to do. Matthew twenty eight eighteen. He says, "All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me." This is Jesus, right? And he says, "Go and through all the world, make disciples." Teach them to, he says, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Then he says, teach them to obey all that I've commanded you. Remember, I'll be with you even to the end of the age. And so, 2 Corinthians also talks about that we are ambassadors for Christ. Uh, God making his appeal through us to be reconciled to God. And so, it's all about interposition. It's all about, like, us placing ourselves guilty sinners before God, but now we're righteous because of faith in Jesus Christ, right? We're declared righteous, right? And now we don't, we don't proclaim ourselves, but we, we proclaim Christ crucified, sure. right? And we, we proclaim that only through faith in Jesus Christ, believing the gospel, can a person be born again, right? Can a person have newness of life, and can a, can a person be saved from the wrath of God? And so what do we do about child murder? Well, what we're doing is, we're, we're telling a person, stop sign, like this sign right here, is that 45 mile an hour, no, it's a stop sign, right? And if you go through this stop sign right here, you, you need to look at it before you go past it because you yeah, need I to know. Yeah, you I need to know that, that what you're about to do is, is murder. And you're not only, you're not only sinning uh, against that person, you're sinning against God ultimately. And so it's always an avenue to bring that person to the gospel. It's always the, per the, uh, the avenue to hopefully be able to plead with that person so we can share the gospel with them so that they would repent and believe in Christ. Right. Yeah, I mean, I don't disagree with almost anything you're saying. I was just talking with the woman who I'm here with, Elizabeth, she may have left. I may actually need to get back because I think they're praying okay. in the back. But um, just that I, apparently there might be statistics about which method is more effective. So right. I am kind of making my own, my, my own mind up here. Right. I salute what you're doing. I pray that God would bless it. Mm -hmm. I'm so grateful that he gave you faith and expound the gospel and faith and, and the walk very beautifully. It's a gift. Um, well, glory to God. 